Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's LRD Spring webinar session on where should I publish? I'm Megan Kowalski. I am the Outreach and Reference Librarian, and I'll be handling the chat and behind the scenes logistics today. Today's webinar is going to be presented by my colleague, Tricia Clark. As a reminder, at the end of this session, we will have time for Q&A, both recorded and unrecorded. And the recording of this event will be sent to everyone who registered this afternoon, and it will be posted to our YouTube page. So thank you for joining us. And Trisha, please take it away. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. As my colleague Megan said, my name is Trisha Clark, um, and I am the Community College Engagement Librarian. Um, before I get started, I wanted to mention that our most recent webinar entitled Beware the Wolf, Identifying Predatory Journals, uh, was focused on how to evaluate journals to determine whether they are predatory or not. So I highly recommend checking that out um, for some great tips and suggestions. You can find the recording for that webinar on our YouTube space. All right, so once you know what kinds of publications to avoid, the next step is to determine what to look for in a credible publication when you are looking to publish. Um, before you start the process of deciding which journal to select, you should really consider what your needs are. So here are a few questions to ask yourself to take stock of what your needs are. So question number one, do you actually need to publish in a peer-reviewed journal? Uh, more than likely you do, but it's not always necessary. So for instance, are you publishing as part of your job requirement? Are you new to the publishing um, and research altogether? Just some things to keep in mind. Another question is, what audience are you aiming for? Is it discipline specific, for instance? All right. Another question is, have you already written a specific type of manuscript? And are you just looking to, for a place to publish it? Or are you considering all of your options as a whole? And then finally, is, this an exp is there uh, an expedited review process uh, desired? So this might make a huge difference to you because maybe you have limited time, uh, maybe you are trying to reach a particular deadline. So you should consider the publication schedule, which, um, can, which you can often find on the journal's website. And I'll show that to you guys in a bit. All right, so the next step is to find a journal. And I just want to add that this webinar is focused exclusively on journals, but um, some information may also be, be applicable to other kinds of submissions as well. Um, so several tools are available to help researchers find the appropriate journal for their articles. One simple way to do that is to start by looking um, for tools or search engines that are aimed at specific disciplines. For instance, you can use UDC search um, to find journals by category. I'm actually going to demonstrate that for you guys. So I'm going to share my screen here. OK, and so you should be um, looking at our library's UDC search for journals. Um, so you can search journals by category right here on the left hand side. We actually have um, several different categories, as you can see, and then subcategories. If you look at um, engineering and applied sciences, for instance, and click on applied mathematics, you'll see a number of journals are available to you online that you can take a look at. So many of them even have uh, sub subcategories. There were a few here that I looked at earlier. So this is just one option available to you, of course, through uh, UDC library. All right, back to my presentation. Okay, so there are also um, a many free online journal finders that are available to you, including the ones that are listed here on your screen. Um, Web of Science Master Journal List is a really popular one. Many of the free online journal finders will require you to submit a paper, um, a paper title and the abstract, so something you've written before, um, so that you can they can match the vocabulary to very specific journals. Um, alternatively, you could also look for specific authors uh, or articles that you're aware of in databases that you may be familiar with and investigate the journal it is published in to learn more about the journal that way. You can also um, look up open access journals. So there are several credible open access 
access journals, which are journals that are open and free to anyone to read um, without cost that are available as options for researchers looking to publish. So some databases to find open access journals and articles include uh, the Director of Open Access Journals, which is an index of diverse open access journals from around the world. Uh, you can also search for journal, uh, individual journal articles um, using this source. CORE is another option, um, and this has the world's largest collection of open access articles. Okay, so an important step in deciding which publications to select is to consider and evaluate the journal um, characteristics. So to do this, you can ask yourself a few additional questions. Uh, question number one, which journals are used by you or your mentors or colleagues? Um, and this speaks to the reputation of that journal, uh, including the level of, uh, of the relevance of the journal and particularly uh, within your discipline. You can also ask yourself, what is the aim and scope of that journal? So this information is usually found on the journal's homepage. Um, it should ideally give you a good idea of the topics the journal covers and the purposes um, and the focus areas of that particular journal. Do you know what the peer review process looks like? Um, a, often journals will give you an idea of, of um, how uh, the process of peer review happens. Is it double blind, for instance? Is it something else? Um, take a look to see if the journal article, if the journal describes a process in detail or at all. And then does the journal follow best practices promoted by professional scholarly publishing organizations? I also want to demonstrate what this looks like and on a journal homepage. So I'm going to share my screen with you again. And I have one pulled up. So this journal is actually available through um, UDC. I found it through our journal search. Um, the Australian National University offers a journal called Aboriginal History Journal. So um, on this actual screen, you can see that they provide a couple of different bits of information, um, including the aims and scope of the journal, right? It talks about what the purpose is, some of its history. It gives you um, detailed journal information, including the ownership and management. It talks about the publishing schedule, which is a really important um, aspect to consider. Um, it talks about access as well as copyright and licensing. This is also a really important detail to consider as you're looking to decide what journals you want to publish in. And um, it talks about the peer review process, as well as whether or not there are any fees. Now, again, some of this was covered in the uh, predatory journal uh, webinar, but um, usually uh, credible journals do not require fees for publishing works. This one also offers information, of course, about how to submit to that particular journal. Right. Okay, and back to our PowerPoint. Okay, so um, some additional information here when deciding where to publish is looking at journal metrics. So journal metrics are useful for evaluating and measuring the impact of a journal as opposed to the impact of an author's individual contribution. So journal metrics essentially aim to show the impact or standing of the journal in its field. Some examples of journal metrics include impact factor, uh, which is used to determine the rank of a journal by measuring how frequently an average article in that journal is cited over a def defined period of time. I will note here that um, there is some ongoing criticism about uh, the effectiveness of using journal impact as a, as a metric. Um, if impact factor also cannot be used to compare journals across disciplines, so the, there is some limitation there. Some other tools that provide citation analysis include CiteScore and SNP, which is a source normalized impact per paper. And you can find information about all of this online. We, of course, can also provide information, additional information if you are interested in finding out more about any of these tools. And then, of course, there is Altmetrics, um, which is short for Alternative Metrics, uh, which goes beyond traditional citation analysis and instead looks at online reader behavior and engagement by analyzing things like tweets, um, blog mentions, article views, downloads, etc. Um, some benefits to Altmetrics, uh, which are often viewed as complements 
uh, to traditional impact measures as opposed to replacements of those. Um, they can be calculated immediately and they can capture information from a variety of sources that may better reflect the broader impact of research, um, of course, also beyond the um, traditional scholarly community. And that's that on where to publish. Um, we hope you have some questions for us. And of course, we can follow up with additional information if you'd like um, detailed information about any of those tools that we've mentioned um, or additional information about how to find journals to publish within. Thank you, Tricia. So if you have any questions, please feel free to either pop them in the chat or unmute yourself. And we will also have time for unrecorded questions at the end. While we wait to see if any questions come in, I did drop a link for a feedback form in the chat. We have a question in the chat. How can we analyze the rigor of journals? Is there a method you suggest for ranking journals? Um, there are, in fact, actually, we can, I can follow up. There are a number of rubrics I've discovered online. Um, several organizations offer rubrics that can help you kind of work through that ranking process. Um, there is not one specific method though. So there, you know, it's, it's taking into consideration a, a couple of the different aspects, including um, your own needs, but also thinking about, um, you know, journals based on uh, discipline too. Yeah, I would, I would add on top of that. I mean, there's a variety of different metrics for kind of journal impact factor, right? And, but a lot of this is so kind of, it, it speaks to very specific needs and very specific disciplines too. Um, so it, it's a little bit hard to say kind of broadly speaking, you know, one that would apply. Um, but I think if we, you know, if we know a little bit more about a discipline, things like that, we could provide a little bit um, more guidance on that. I also think one thing to remember is that there's actually no one right or perfect journal for any article, um, simply because there are so many out there. Yes, there are some preferred journals, um, but sometimes it's what is best for you in that particular moment, um, and things change over time, and also as your scholarship changes over time, things change. And I would, I would add a couple other things, too. One is, uh, you know, there is a growing open access movement in academia. Um, which I think, you know, from for perspective of a librarian and, you know, an information wants to be free person, I think that's a really good thing. Um, so I think, you know, open access journals have kind of uh, not been on the fringes necessarily, but not seen as kind of um, comparable to to other journals. I think that's changing. And so I think, you know, your commitment, your personal commitment and interest in open access is something to consider as well. And, you you know, you may encounter some article, so one thing that happens with some open access journals, some, not all, uh, it depends on the publishing model and, and that they're following specifically, is you may encounter some article processing charges or APCs. Um, and that's usually to defray the cost of, you know, kind of the, the labor that goes into the journal itself. Um, some universities will cover some APCs for you if you want to publish open access. Um, others may not. So, you know, again, it, this is one of those things that kind of varies very specifically journal by journal. Um, I don't currently know what the status of UBC covering APCs is. Um, I see a question in the chat about open access journals being peer reviewed. Um, yes, generally speaking, right? But just as you would with many other journals, you can kind of do a little bit of, a, you know, digging around in the background. Um, and I think, uh, checking to see they'll, they'll say what their peer review process is, generally speaking, if it's a high quality journal. Um, but you know the, the kind of growing stronger open access journals are certainly peer reviewed. Yes, and I uh, just put the link for our predatory journals webinar in the chat um, for those who may have missed it. And when it does come to the cost of publishing in journals, yes, as Kathy was talking about, there are some fees for journal processing, but generally those are nominal to maybe a couple hundred of dollars, depending on the journal. Uh, predatory journals, you, you see fee on top of fee. It, it begins to get to be exorbitant costs. Um, and generally, if your first instinct is that's really expensive, that's a sign it's a predatory journal. It's not always the case, but it is generally a sign. Um, and 
Open access journals, as Kathy has mentioned, do have a few more APCs simply to ensure that they remain open access for people to read the materials. But most of these journals, if you contact them, are willing to work with you if those fees are not something that you can uh, pay for. Um, at, you know, out of your own pocket or at your university. Um, predatory journals won't work that way. They want your money. Um, so that is one thing, you know, most journal companies, if these fees are a problem, you can work with them and see if you can develop something, but predatory journals generally don't do that. I also put a link for Spark. It is an open access support program, and they also include things like how to retain your rights as an author when you publish, and so that is worth checking out. Right. I'm not seeing any more questions come in, so I'm going to end the uh, recording so that we have a chance. Oh, and Kathy is reminding me, we do have an open access. Um, a, apologies, I'm trying to type and talk at the same time, and we know that never ends well. We do have a scholarly communications um, libguide where you can find support services um, in regards to publishing um, and other things that matter in scholarly communications, and I've just dropped that in the chat. Um, you can access that at any time. Feel free to contact us if you have any follow-up questions, and since I'm not seeing any other questions come in, I'm going to go ahead and end the recording to allow for some unrecorded questions.